Highly satisfactory. <laughs> Anyone opens that gate, they'll find the target. No oh, nonsense, my boy. It's perfectly safe in there. Yes. France. Yes, <laughs> most certainly. Well, how do you know that? Hmm. Very good. Date? Any idea of the date, Doctor? Well, by the look of those houses, I would say medieval. Although I suppose it might be as late as the 17th century. I... Look out! that? We've landed in the middle of the 16th century. <laughs> yes, and that was the very time. What are you talking about? Yes, that strange brotherhood of apothecaries. Well ahead of their time. Now, what was the name of that man that lived in Paris? Uh, pe 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 Prisoner! Prisoner! That's the man. Yes, the most advanced man of them all. I must try to get to see him. Oh. Too cautious, Nicholas. The Catholics know of only one way to settle our differences. Times are difficult enough for us here, without you provoking further quarrels. I? Oh, can't be fair. Paris hates our kind. We'll do anything it can to provoke us. You must control your temper, Gaston. It is imperative that we keep the peace at this time. We're in Paris. Quite so, dear boy. Well, now, don't let us dawdle. We must go in and change. Well, have you got the right clothes? You'll be surprised what I've got in my wardrobe. And I want to turn over a few old papers. Yes, come along. There's no time to lose. Come along. Come along. Come along. Oh, <laughs> no, no. Is, uh, is everybody's mug filled? Yes. yes. Then drink to Henry of Navarre, our Protestant prince. Henry, Henry of Navarre. Navarre. And to his pride, our Catholic princess. <laughs> Lanot! Yes, sir! Have you got no decent wine? Where are the Burgundies? Or even the German wines? Sir, we have the best Bordeaux on the market. A thin Catholic brew. Doesn't <laughs> <it> very <laughs> For a free thinking German, Monsieur Mus, you have some sense. Vicomte, you have insulted Her Highness the Princess. Simon Duval. What a surprise. No doubt you visit this tavern because the air is clearer of rigid Catholic dogma. <laughs> you have not answered me? Answered you? I wasn't aware you'd asked me a question. The insult to Princess Marguerite. It was an accident. He choked. Well then, drink again to her. Yes. We both will. To the princess. <laughs> 
most of them are in the service of the Admiral de Coligny. I have to serve them, sir. I hate these Huguenots as much as the next man. But I have to live. Certainly you must serve them. But watch and listen. Report to me anything you hear or see. Certainly, anything, sir. Here in Paris, we know what is right. Though, for people like Michel, with a living to earn. Of course. But watch your business. Give up! Leaving it so soon. Can't you stomach the wine here? I have business elsewhere. After all, my dear Vicomte, a tavern is a place where a gentleman may refresh himself while simpler people amuse him with their buddy now. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be of the least interest to you, dear boy. Then all why? Look, I'm not going to sit in the TARDIS whilst you gallivant around Paris. I shall do nothing of the sort. I am going to visit Presnan. He lives on the other side of Paris, somewhere near Port Saint-Martin, I believe. Thank you. I just want to sit down and have a talk with him about his work. Are you interested in Germanology? Hmm? I don't know. What is it? Well, you, uh, there you are, you see. And you know nothing about this period, do you? You'll only be found out for the man that you are. <laughs> Look, I'll be careful. I'm perfectly careful of, of looking after myself. I'll just walk around Paris and see the sights. Well, uh, in that case, I shan't visit Pesler. Oh, no, don't be silly. You can't wait to talk to him. Come on, you go. I'll be all right. Well, you'll never forgive yourself if you don't. But you promise me you won't get into trouble? Yes, of course. I'll try not to talk to anyone. And come back here this evening, and we'll go off to the TARDIS together. That's all right. Now you go and find your Monsieur yeah. Fraisland. Quite, quite. You will need that. Oh, thanks. And don't cut yourself with that sword. All right, I beg your pardon, sir. It is customary, sir, to pay for the wine consumed. Oh, oh yes, of course. Here, take this. The wine is too sous. I cannot change this. Well, that's all I have. I cannot change gold. Can I help you? You're a stranger here. Yes. This man won't change my money. I ask for two sous and it gives me an EQ. I cannot change it, you coin. Here. Thank you, sir. Is that Parisian hospitality? What do you mean, sir? The gentleman's a coup. A thousand apologies. I wasn't thinking. Oh. Thank you. I'm afraid I don't understand your money. Not at all. Excuse me. Yes? Can you tell me the way to the Port Saint-Martin? Certainly, but... As a stranger to Paris, I think you'll have difficulty finding it. And so I've got to try. You see, I must find a man called Praislein. I'm sorry, I don't know the name. Oh. Is anything wrong? Oh, I don't know. You see, the friend who was with me has gone there. When he left here, it looked as though he was followed. Well, the old man? Yes. You see, he's gone to find an apothecary there. Is he sick? Oh, no. No, no, he's a scientist. He's gone to talk to him about his idea. A dangerous thing to do in days like these. Oh, well, perhaps it doesn't matter. He'll be able to take care of himself. He usually does. In that case, you needn't worry. No. <laughs> I don't think you're sure. Look, come and drink some wine with us, and later I'll take you to the port some oh, No, thank you, but, uh, well, I don't want to intrude. I Nonsense. Mean, uh, come and join us. Later, we'll make sure your friend is safe. All right, thank you. I'm afraid I've never been in Paris before. Allow us to be your guides. <coughs> What do you want? I am looking for Charles Chrysler. He doesn't live here. Oh, but this is his shop. It was. He's gone. 
Where? He's left Paris. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Now, isn't that a pity? And I did so want to talk to him about his work. Make more trouble for him? Trouble? Not at all. I'm a scientist, too. I merely wished to discuss his work with him. He was merely a mixer of herbs and unguents. Yes, perhaps to you, but uh, he was a man who searched deeply in nature. I didn't think he was a faint heart. No, but cautious. I see. Yes. He also discovered uh, small creatures which, if attacking humanity, could cause a very serious illness. Why not French? No. Yet you know of Presler? Yes, in science news travels. Yes. And there's a man in Germany at the moment who's working on optics, trying to make a machine which will enable Presler to see these small creatures. He calls them germs. Is it so? Are they really doing this? Yes. So now, doesn't this encourage you to continue with your theories, Monsieur Presler? Yes, I... I am Charles Presler. Forgive me, but in these days one has to be careful. Of course, of course, my dear fellow. But I'm extremely curious about your work, Monsieur Presler. Don't mind Gaston Stevens. He's like this with any stranger. In fact, he'd cross-question his own shadow. Don't mock me, Nicholas. I'm in France to protect my master, Henry of Navarre. Just as you are to protect the colony. You're too suspicious. Stevens has been traveling abroad. He knows nothing about what's been happening here. Do you? No. No, I really do know very little. Yes, but as you come from England, you must be for the Huguenot. Uh, yes, what you call a, a, a Protestant. Oh, yes. yes. There. You see? It's just that I'm interested in our friends. Now, tell us where you've been traveling. Well, I've been... I've been in Egypt. In Egypt? Yes. Look, uh, I've taken up far too much of your time. Perhaps you'd be good enough to tell me the way to the Port Saint-Martin. I'll come with you and show you this. Ah, thank you, but really, I should try to find my friend. Wise man. Nicholas here only knows the most boring place. <laughs> <laughs> At least let me point out the solid right here. Yes, thank you. get there, ask again. Anyone will tell you. Oh, I think I can find it now. Well, thank you, Nicholas. A pleasure. What? And what do you want? A girl who came in here. My Lord Cardinal's guard, aren't you? What does he want with the wench? She's a servant. She ran away. I have orders to bring her back. She doesn't appear to care for the Cardinal's service. I suggest you let her go. She is chosen for the staff of the house of the Abbot of Amboise. Clearly she likes that no more. Let me pass. Uh. My Lord Abbot shall hear of this when he arrives. Yes, I'm sure he will. Tell him to take the story to our Cardinal in Rome. No doubt he'll like it also. There now. I thought he might be roused, wouldn't he? Yes. Hey, come, Mr. Englishman. Join us again. Clearly not safe for you to walk alone. What about the girl? Uh, Where is she? She's just a servant. A chance to bait a Catholic. Forget her. Come, come, come. But, sir, uh, who is this abbot? Hmm? The abbot of Amboise. He hates us all. Yes, I suppose just now all churchmen are rather suspicious of your work. But surely you can carry on without his knowledge. Hmm? You don't know the man. 
The Abbot of Amboise is the Cardinal of Lorraine's right hand. Well, the Cardinal in Rome, the Abbot has decided to come to Paris. We shall be hunted down. That man is far more dangerous than the Cardinal. I suppose there's no point in uh, going to see him. <laughs> None. Unless you want to be thrown into prison for heresy. Hmm. I wonder. The girl was clearly frightened out of her wits. We should find her. Nonsense. She's probably gone back to her own people. Don't you want to know why she was frightened? No? Many things frighten people in Paris these days. Hey, 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 you girl. Ah, come here. Come on. Now then. My friend here, whom you ran into, wants to know why you're frightened. Can't you go? Oh, for goodness sake, you're frightening her even more. It's all right. Just tell us what it is you fear. Nothing, sir. Yes, but you were running away. Why? Louis, go back a guard. Go! Then answer us. Why were you frightened? Just something I overheard, sir. What? Well, you see, I come from Bathy. And when they said it might happen again... What's that? They said it would happen again, and, and my father died there, Come so along, you... Gaston. What did you hear? I was just passing the room, and I, and I heard them mention Bassey. What did they say? Something about, uh, about it happening before the week was passed. Who spoke? The captain who followed me is there and another man. Now tell us exactly what you heard. Just, just the word that made me stop, sir. My father died yes, at Bassey, yes, and yes, I... Yes, what are you all talking about? Ten years ago at Vassy, a small mock town some miles south of Paris, a hundred Huguenots were slaughtered by the Catholics. Why? Because they were Huguenots. Listen, girl. What do they call you? Anne. Um. Anne. Think back. Remember every single word the captain and the other man said. Well, I told you. Then tell us again. You fool. To allow the meddlesome Vicomte de Laron to stop you. There were too many of them. They'd have killed us before we even found the girl. The girl is just a servant. She couldn't have understood us. If she should remember what you said and should repeat it, she could put our friend on his guard. We didn't speak of him. Then what did you say to frighten the girl? Nothing. Servants don't run away from a house in fear for nothing. I think we mentioned Vassy and the celebrations here in Paris, but nothing that anyone could have made head or tail of. She made something of it. Vassy. <laughs> That might have been it. That word alone is enough to put every Huguenot in Paris on his guard. I will go and look for her. You will not. You will wait here and report this to the abbot. It was your mistake. I'm sure he wants to congratulate you himself. But... Very well. And you, find out if she has any relations in Paris. If she has, seek them out. And find if she's fled there. That girl must be found. She can't help us anymore. You can go. No, wait. If the Catholics find her, they can easily discover what she's told us. We'll just keep her out of sight. And just what do you propose to do with her? She can work in the Admiral's kitchen. I won't find her there. Go to the house of the Admiral of Coligny. Tell them that Nicholas Moose sent you. Where is that, sir? Oh. No one is more ignorant than the common people of Paris. The Admiral of France lives on the corner of the Rue de Bétis and the Rue de Labre Sec. Thank you, sir. So what do they mean? These things she overheard. A threat to Navarre. I must warn him. I'll see you later, Nicholas. I'm afraid you've arrived in Paris at a most unfortunate time. I wish I understood what was going on. My English friend, it's really quite simple. Henry of Navarre is a Huguenot, a Protestant prince. Yesterday, he married Marguerite of France, a Catholic. The marriage was arranged by the Queen Mother in the hope that it would heal the religious wound that's tearing France in two. But in the light of what that girl overheard, it looks as if the Catholics are plotting against Navarre's life. Do you understand? Yes. Yes, I think I do. Now I must leave you. I must see the Admiral at once. Forgive me that I cannot show you Paris. Oh, I shall be all right. Besides, my friend should be returning soon. Pleasant journey. Goodbye. Goodbye.
You showed the old man the way? Good. I only hope he succeeds. You were not seen? I hope not. You've done well. Good luck, old man. Good luck. The girl. The girl. The girl that fled in here this morning. What happened to her? I don't know. I was down in the cellar, and when I came up, there she was being questioned by the Huguenots. The Vicomte de Laran, Nicholas Muth? Yes, and another man. Who? He's still here. Over there. Who is he? I don't know. A stranger. English, I think. Go on. The Vicomte left. Hurriedly, once they'd finished with the girl. And where is she now? Sure, it is difficult to hear everything. I must watch over the old cabin. Haven't I paid you enough? Oh, come, sir. What happened to the girl? She... I remember. She was sent to the house of Admiral de Coligny. I see. Thank you, my friend. Good evening. A stranger to this city? Yes. I thought you must be. Most wise people are at home by this time. It's almost time for the curfew. The curfew? Yes, an unfortunate necessity which even the marriage of Protestant Henry to our great king's sister haven't been able to rectify. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't understand. I'm on my way back to England. I really know very little of what's been going on here. I trust you found yourself somewhere comfortable to stay while you're here. Apartments are hard to find at this time, Paris being so full for the celebration. I shall be all right. I'm leaving tonight. I'm just waiting for a friend. I hope he comes soon. Otherwise, you won't be able to leave. I expect we'll be all right. Thanks. Good. He's waiting for a friend. Watch and see who it is. Nicholas! Stephen! Stephen, you're still here. Where's your friend? I don't know. He said he'd meet me here tonight. He hasn't arrived yet. But it's time for the curfew. Where will you stay if he doesn't come? I don't know. But I'm sure he will come. Here's the curfew now. You must come with me. You can always come back here in the morning. Landlord! Yes, sir. If an old man arrives asking for the Englishman, tell him he's lodging with the Admiral of Coligny and will return here in the morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come. Look, this is very kind of you, but I'm sure he will come. Not now. He must be delayed somewhere. There's nothing we can do tonight. I suppose you're right. He's probably got sidetracked. He often does. All right, thank you. I will accept your offer. Then come. English. I wonder what they're up to. I shall want a full report in the morning on all that happens. And that is what happened. If it hadn't been for the Vicomte de Laran, the captain would almost certainly have caught her. It was pure mischance. I'm sure she couldn't have made any sense of what we said. Simon Duval has gone to the inn where she escaped, and the captain has gone to find an aunt of hers. I'm certain that it's only a matter of time. In fact, one of them may be bringing her back here now. Forgive me, Father Abbott, but the missing girl is at the house of Admiral de Coligny. Fetch her tomorrow. Bring her to me 